So, you know that old people are obsessed with television? Well, I, I mean the typical boomers, as you know them. The generation raised on TV and they worship it. It's like their life force and their commanding hive mind queen or something like that. They are so obsessed with their TVs. If you, They'll, they'll leave their TVs on 24-7 and if you dare to turn them off, they will get mad at you. Funny note, super mega ancient people like the grandparent, the great great grandparents when TV was a new thing. These ancient oldies when TV was new would go like, oh no, the TV people are, are watching me, they can see me. <laughs> They're like getting all schizo over it. And like some other old people, one was like an ancient old lady that was like using an electric clothing iron and she would put it up and dangle it in such a way as to let the electricity leak out like water. And actually, this stuff is making me wonder about the strange things young children do following some weird inborn logic that doesn't seem to work with the rules of reality. But then there's another problem. What is reality? You know how they say magic only works if you believe in it? You know, I mean, I've never seen a person flying through the air. I've never seen a person breathing water. I've never seen a person pull f fire or materialize an object. Okay, I've seen illusion tricks that are purely mechanical and sleight of hand. But if I ever see anyone just flying around and going through a wall, I'll let you know about it. But I'm, I'm certain illusion magic is real, but, like, that's mental. And I do believe, I mean, I'm certain that psychic abilities are... Just something that all of the life forms on Earth are given. I mean, if you're thinking about going for a walk, then a dog might approach you. Or when you just start sharing thoughts, like you don't realize you're sharing a thought, but then you find out later somebody else had the exact same thought at the same time. But there's a thing called a, the sequestering. That's why today computers are associated with wizards. People that are extremely good with computers and programming are called wizards. But... You'll never see, like, medieval-type depictions of witches and wizards using telephones and computers unless it's a joke. That is because radio waves, Wi-Fi, 5G, telev analog television waves, digital waves, all of that stuff in the air, Prince of the Power of the Air, is making psychic abilities useless. You cannot... Your psychic abilities, which you do have, are now extremely extremely limited to a very tiny range because of a thing called the sequestering the airwaves are full of they're full of bullshit that's why these mental abilities aren't working and yeah you know, I, I just wonder about this stuff I, I mean i'm not gonna approach any witches or wizards like stay the hell away but just the fact that this stuff is real and just it gives you something to think about but anyway i was mainly initially talking about television and i got sidetracked now, when I was new to the world, television was presented as the ultimate seal of quality. We were hardcore brainwashed in school, all of it, elementary through high school, to believe it was if it was published in a so-called reputable source or on a reputable platform, it was legit because it had multiple layers of polish. It had some respected names slapped on top. It was peer-reviewed. Oh, you should know what that means. And... The videos had all these layers of productions. Basically, the more money and branding something got, the better it was regarded. And you know that Wikipedia doesn't like independent research. Now, that is so wrong. All research should be independent. But, yeah, that's just how it is. Like, then there's things like the National Enquirer, which started out, like, there, it used to be, like, a real-life version of LiveLeak, kind of. They were, like, publishing gruesome photos, and then some bullshit happened, and they became political, and adding money to stuff usually... Up to a certain point, money can get you good equipment and more staff members, and after a certain point, money will make the quality drop. Like, go at, at YouTube, maybe one or two editors could be paid to make quality objectively better. But then, like, if you keep adding more money, you get guys like, comment, subscribe, and then overprodu overproduction, mugging for the camera, a person standing in front of their camera with this big old microphone flexing, and then making ten unfunny jokes, and just, and then they, like, spend five minutes shouting out their Patreons. That is why too much money makes quality go down. You should only buy good equipment and a few more helping hands, period. Nothing more. And I think a lot of people have kind of figured out that even though we were programmed and conditioned to believe that if something is on TV, it has to be reputable because look at all the money dumped into it. Look at all the polish it has. Well, people realized, wait, this much polish and 
production on a simple video is a red flag. If, you, if you're going to make genuine human content, it should just be minimal. It should be clear, easy to look at. You should know editing skills. You shouldn't need to hire an editor. Okay, are you making that much work where it's it's necessary to hire an editor? You would have burnout, but if you just do it yourself, you could just do a good job. It'd be minimalistic, but you could hear and see everything. Oh, and, and not only that, but like, so many big freaking videos are delayed by months because they're just polishing a turd. And if it was just really rough and basic, they could have it out within two days, maximum. But my main point was, I, I kind of bring this up a lot. Ordinary people are discouraged because we are held to such high standards that, okay, even just some common pleb that can't sing or paint or write will, like, make fun of somebody else who can't sing or paint or write to go, ah, your skills suck, haha. <laughs> well, their skills suck, and, like, there's just bucket crab mentality about producing things and like if it's not perfect people just try and rip it to shreds and if it's highly produced they'll praise it but that's life and people are just feeling like they can't even begin to attempt to make something like they just feel so daunted and they feel like they're held to an unrealistically high standard which is by design and it's also artificial like nobody is really holding you to a high standard they're just being bucket crabs they're just they're just jealous that you're making something and that they're not so they'll just like oh oh how come you're not making a shiny polished overproduced stupid thing well forget them uh, anyways, I, I always talk about unrealistic expectations and unrealistic standards and expecting one single person to put out the kind of documentary you would see on PBS or something. Or it's like expecting one person with a, a camcorder and a couple of friends to make a blockbuster movie. But, you know, uh, all that media stuff is just bullshit. It's all controlled. It, it's actually pretty sick how tight the Baphomet freak control over even small-time local media is. But there's always a, a true indie scene. But, like, here's another thing. Independent media is not independent. If you just go look at indie games, they're all... All the characters are inverted, and there's always going to be Marxist, SJW, trans agenda type stuff, and they're all the same, and they're appealing to the Tumblr crowd who, who've now migrated to Twitter, and th that's just how it is. Oh, and indie stuff is often, I believe they often have a secret investor, or I guess what some people might call an angel investor. Angel investor, hmm. And these are often... I think anonymous rich people that are donating a lot of money but they don't talk about it to a project and the reason why they're doing that. Uh, look at Queer Kid stuff in Undertale. I am certain that Queer Kid stuff in Undertale have secret investors and secret funding because Queer Kid stuff only gets mocked and bashed on. And by the way, the host of that is actually a real woman, but most real women are like that. So, uh, man, how is it when you see Lindsay Amer and Riley J. Dennis sitting together? One is a biological woman, and the other one is a biological male. And I'm pretty sure he has two balls. In fact, I wonder if Riley J. Dennis actually, when not on YouTube, I think he might actually just be one of those MTF that are, you know, just a man in drag. But, like, I think only for his YouTube gig does he come out as, an, as a, a biological male. That's just what I'm thinking. I, I think it's like a character he plays where I don't even know. This stuff is ridiculous. It's just so zigzagging and recursive. It, it's insane. Like, uh, you know, the cross-dressing thing. Well, here's a, here's a question. If the jeans are made for Martins and they're labeled as from being for men, but they're shaped for Martins and a woman puts them on, that's not cross-dressing because it fits. Now, how about jeans made for a castrato? Marketed towards girls, but like if a woman puts them on, they're not going to come up past her thighs because they're, they're made for boys. And so if a woman is trying to dress up like a castrato, that's cross-dressing. If a man tried to dress up like a castrato, that would be not cross-dressing, but it would look very stupid. So cross-dressing is a hoax. Okay. I don't even know what's natural anymore, really. As far as I'm concerned, it's all a bunch of fabrics and patterns and wear what you want. I don't care. And I, I don't wear any patterns. I just wear, like, plain clothes, jeans, hoodie, shoes, yeah. No patterns, no branding. But, you know, whatever. If it says it's for men, it's for Martins, and women should wear it because it actually fits. And that stuff made for castrati is really bad quality. It will rip immediately. Like, it's just poorly made. But, yeah, anyway, bye.